the smaller sutra on Amitayus, also known as Sutra on Amitayus Buddha delivered by Shakyamuni Buddha or smaller Sukhavati Vyuha, translated into Chinese in the Yao Qin dynasty by the Tripitaka master Kumara Chiva from Kucha, translated from Chinese into English by Isyao Inagaki with Harold Stewart. The unsurpassed, profound, and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of eons. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to fathom the Tathagata's true meaning. Thus have I heard. At one time the Buddha was staying in the Jetta Grove Monastery of Anatta Pindadas Garden at Shravasti, together with a large assembly of twelve hundred and fifty monks who were all great arhats, well known to the people. Among them were great disciples such as the elders Shariputra, Mahamalgayana, Mahakashapa, Mahakachayana, Mahakaustela, Revata, Shudipantaka, Nanda, Ananda, Rahula, Gavangpati, Pindola Barvaja, Kalodayin, Mahakapina, Vakula, and Aniruta. He was also accompanied by many bodhisattva Mahasattvas, such as Dharma Prince, Manjushri, Ajita Bodhisattva, Sweet Smelling Elephant Bodhisattva, and Constant Endeavor Bodhisattva, and by innumerable Devas, including Chakra, Lord of the Gods, and many others. The Buddha then said to Elder Shariputra, If you travel westward from here, passing a hundred thousand kotis of Buddha lands. You will come to the land called Utmost Bliss, where there is a Buddha named Amitayus. He is living there now, teaching the Dharma. Shariputra, why is that land called Utmost Bliss? The beings in that land suffer no pain, but only enjoy pleasures of various kinds. For this reason that land is called utmost bliss. Again, Shariputra. In the land of utmost bliss there are seven rows of balustrades, seven rows of decorative nets, and seven rows of trees. They are all made of four kinds of jewels and extend over the whole land encompassing everything. For this reason that land is called utmost bliss. Again Shariputra, in the land of utmost bliss there are seven jeweled ponds filled with water possessing the eight excellent qualities. The beds of the ponds are covered solely with gold sand and from the four sides of each bed rise stairs of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. Above these stand pavilions adorned with gold, silver, beryl, crystal, sapphire, rosy pearls, and cornelian. In the ponds are lotuses as large as chariot wheels, the blue ones radiating a blue light, the yellow a yellow light, the red a red light, and the white a white light. They are marvelous and beautiful, fragrant and pure. Shariputra, the land of utmost bliss, is filled with such splendid adornments. Again, Shariputra, in that Buddha land, heavenly music is played continually. The ground is made of gold. 
six times during the day and night. Mandarava flowers rain down from the sky. Every day in the serenity of early morning, the people of that land fill the hems of their robes with exquisite flowers and go to make offerings to a hundred thousand kotis of Buddhas, dwelling in the worlds of all the other directions. Then they return to the pure land for their morning meal. After the meal, they enjoy a stroll. Shariputra, the land of utmost bliss, is filled with such splendid adornments. Again, Shariputra, in that land there are always many kinds of rare and beautiful birds of various colors, such as white geese, peacocks, parrots, sharis, kalafinkas, and jivankjivakas. Six times during the day and night, birds sing with melodious and delicate sounds, which proclaim such teachings as the five roots of good, the five powers, the seven practices leading to enlightenment, and the noble eightfold path. On hearing them, all the people of that land become mindful of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. But, Shariputra, you should not assume that these birds are born as retribution for evil karma. The reason is that none of the three evil realms exists in that Buddha land. Shariputra, even the names of the three evil realms, do not exist there. How much less? the realms themselves. These birds are manifested by Amitayus so that their singing can proclaim and spread the Dharma. In that Buddha land, Shariputra, when soft breezes waft through the rows of jeweled trees and jeweled nets, they produce subtle, wonderful sounds. It is as if a hundred thousand musical instruments were playing together. Everyone who hears the sounds spontaneously becomes mindful of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, Shariputra. That Buddha land is filled with such splendid adornments. For what reason, Shariputra, do you think that Buddha is called Amitabha. Shariputra, the Buddha's light shines boundlessly and without hindrance over all the worlds of the ten directions. It is for this reason that he is called Amitabha. Again, Shariputra, the lives of the Buddha and the people of his land last for innumerable, unlimited, and incalculable help us. It is for this reason that the Buddha is called Amitayus. Shariputra, ten kalpas have passed since Amitayus attained enlightenment. Moreover, Shariputra, he has an immeasurable and unlimited number of Shravaka disciples, all of them arhats, whose number cannot be reckoned by any means. His assembly of bodhisattvas is similarly vast. Shariputra, that Buddha land is filled with such splendid adornments. Again, Shariputra, all sentient beings born in the land of utmost bliss dwell in the stage of non-retrogression. Many of them are in the stage of becoming a Buddha after one more life. Their number is so great that it is beyond reckoning. It can only be described as innumerable, unlimited, and incalculable. Shariputra, those sentient beings who hear of that land, should aspire to be born there. Why? Because they will be able to meet such sages of supreme virtue. Shariputra, one cannot attain birth in that land with few roots of good or a small store of merit. Shariputra, if a good man or woman who hears of Amitayus holds fast to his name even for one day, 
Two days, three, four, five, six, or seven days with a concentrated and undistracted mind. Then, at the hour of death, Amitayus will appear with a host of holy ones. Consequently, when their life comes to an end, the aspirants' minds will not fall into confusion, and so they will be born immediately in the land of utmost bliss of Amitayus. Shariputra, perceiving these benefits, I say, all sentient beings who hear this teaching should aspire to birth in that land. Shariputra, just as I praise the inconceivable virtue of Amitayus, so do the Buddhas in the eastern direction as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Akshobhya Buddha, Merudivaja Buddha, Mahameru Buddha, Meru Prabhasa Buddha, and Manjusvara Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long, broad tongues and, encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, Praise of the Inconceivable Virtue and Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra There are, in the southern direction, Buddhas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Chandra Surya Pradipa Buddha, Yashasprabha Buddha, Maharichiskanda Buddha, Merupatipa Buddha, and Anantavarya Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long, broad tongues, and, encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, Praise of the Inconceivable Virtue and Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra. There are, in the western direction, Buddhas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Amitayus Buddha, Amitaketu Buddha, Amitadvaja Buddha, Mahaprabha Buddha, Mahaprabhasa Buddha, Ranaketu Buddha, and Shudarashmi Prabha Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long broad tongues and, encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, Praise of the Inconceivable Virtue and Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra. There are, in the northern direction, Buddhas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Arichiskanda Buddha, Vaishvanara Nagosha Buddha, Dushpradasha Buddha, Aditya Sangbhava Buddha, and Jalini Prabha Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long, broad tongues, and encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, Praise of the Inconceivable Virtue and Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra there are, in the nadir, Buddhas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Singha Buddha, Yashas Buddha, Yashas Prabhasa Buddha, Dharma Buddha, Dharma Divaja Buddha, and Dharmadhara Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long, broad tongues, and, encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, 
praise of the inconceivable virtue and protection by all Buddhas. Shariputra, there are in the zenith Buddhas as numerous as the sands of the Ganges River, such as Brahmagosha Buddha, Nakshatra Raja Buddha, Gandotama Buddha, Gandaprabhasa Buddha, Maharichiskanda Buddha, Ratnakusuma Sangpushpitagatra Buddha, Shalindra Raja Buddha, Ratnotapala Sri Buddha, Sarvartadarsha Buddha, and Sumeru Kalpa Buddha. While dwelling in their own lands, they extend their long, broad tongues, and, encompassing with them the universe of a thousand million worlds, pronounce these words of truth. Sentient beings should accept this sutra, entitled, Praise of the Inconceivable Virtue and Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra, why do you think this teaching is called? the Sutra of Protection by All Buddhas. Shariputra, all good men and women who hear this sutra and hold fast to it, and also those who hear the names of those Buddhas, are protected by all the Buddhas and dwell in the stage of non-retrogression for realizing highest perfect enlightenment. This is why Shariputra, you should accept my words in faith and the teachings of all the Buddhas. Shariputra, those who have already aspired, now aspire, or in the future will aspire to be born in the land of Amitayus Buddha, all dwell in the stage of non-retrogression for realizing highest perfect enlightenment. They have already been born, are now being born, or will be born in that land. Hence, Shariputra, good men and women of faith, should aspire to birth there. Shariputra, just as I now praise the inconceivable virtue of other Buddhas, they also praise my inconceivable virtue, saying, Shakyamuni Buddha, you have accomplished an extremely difficult and unprecedented task. In this Saha world, during the evil period of the five defilements, those of time, views, passions, sentient beings, and lifespan, you have attained highest perfect enlightenment, and, for the sake of sentient beings, have delivered this teaching which is the most difficult in the world to accept in faith. Shariputra you must realize that I have accomplished this difficult task during the period of the five defilements. That is to say, having attained highest perfect enlightenment, I have, for the sake of the world, delivered this teaching, which is so hard for people to accept in faith. This is indeed an extremely difficult task. When the Buddha had delivered this sutra, Shariputra and all the monks, together with beings of the whole world, including devas, humans, and asuras, rejoiced at what they had heard and reverently accepted it. Having worshipped him, they departed. <laughs>